Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I want to show you how we built our cedar raised beds. If you've been following along with our gardening journey so far, you may have seen our cedar raised beds in our vlog where we showed you all about our garden cottage. I'll link that below. But today I want to show you how we built them. They were so super easy took one day to put them all together and get them planted seriously. So what you need is six cedar fence posts for one raised bed. Now the reason we went with the cedar fence post is it was the only kind of affordable cedar that our local lumber yard had on hand. That's all they had. Plus it's just a really cheap way to go. I believe we got them for around $2 each. So less than $15 per raised bed. Now cedar, is the ideal choice for building raised beds because it is rot resistant naturally. So we didn't really wanna get treated lumber because we didn't want that kind of whatever the treatment was to leach into our garden and our food and the soil. And so we wanted to go with cedar because of those natural rot resistant properties. And the cedar fence pickets were the most economical way to do it. So the first step is we cut off the top part of the picket, so where they kind of go in at the top. Now this isn't something you would have to do you could just have that showing on the outside. We decided to do it just to make it look a little bit cleaner, but that's totally optional. Next, we cut in half the end board. So we measured the cedar fence pickets. Ours were six feet, and then we cut them at three feet so that the ends would be three feet. So for each cedar raised bed, you're going to need four of those shorter pieces. So you're gonna to want to cut in half two. Next, we took several ripped two by fours. So we had some available from a previous project, actually our chicken coop that we built, and I showed you all about that on here. We had ripped some two by fours right down the center. And so we had quite a bit of that on hand. Luke just did it with his table saw. You could use any kind of small piece of lumber to go in the corners. And we cut several 10 inch sections of that. Now these are just to go in the corners of the raised beds and as center supports. Now you'll need six of these per raised bed. So just keep cutting until you have enough for how many that you want. We ended up making six for our garden and then one long flower bed one. We might end up adding more later, but that's what we have for now. Okay, next take one of the long cedar fence pickets and in the corner of that, drill in place one of the 10 inch two by fours cut in half. Next, stand that piece up and then add one of the shorter ends to the two by four piece. And then just repeat all the way around until you have all four walls attached to four 10 inch two by fours ripped in half. Next, add the second layer. So these are all two cedar fence picket widths high and add those all the way around to the two by fours. Now at the end, we went ahead and added one of the 10 inch two by four supports on the inside center. Now that was just to give it a little bit of additional support. And that's optional. We just didn't want ours bowing out whenever we added the topsoil. And then just repeat until you have as many raised beds as you want. Like I said, these easy DIY cedar raised beds are so inexpensive and easy. You can whip them up in a day and have your garden. Now, some of the advantages that we see of raised beds is one, kids don't run over top of the soil and compact it or get into your veggies as much. Also, it's a little bit less weeding after you get out the initial weeds that kind of came with the soil. And then you're able to fill them with whatever soil you can find. So if you live in say a neighborhood where they sold off the topsoil or whatever they do in neighborhoods, usually the soil isn't as good. You can kind of completely get beyond that and just fill it with whatever good soil you can find. You can add compost and make it a richer soil over the years and have yourself a really great garden no matter where you are. It's also a great space saver because you don't have to worry about rows. You create the rows in between the raised beds. And then you're able to actually harvest things and weed a lot easier because you're not all the way on the ground. They're a little bit elevated. So we're really loving our raised beds. We filled it with some local topsoil. We had a neighbor come by and use his tractor to fill them for us, which was great. And then we planted them and our garden is now growing. It's been maybe two or three, four weeks, I lose track of time. Since we planted them, everything is growing great and we expect these to last us quite a while. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this very, very easy tutorial. I know that 
This video is definitely late for this season. It's kind of past the time where you'd be building race beds. But hopefully if you're finding this next spring, maybe next February, when you can be preparing for your garden, you'll find this helpful or you can always just start working on them now for next year. All right, well, if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I make two videos every week on food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home. We also are restoring a late 19th century farmhouse as well as making the seven acres into our little homestead just one project at a time it is quite the journey and i'm taking you all along every step of the way as you know thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse